Welcome everyone, it's Father Dave in the library. Great to have you with us. We're just going to begin with a little prayer, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you give us grateful hearts and a desire to praise and thank you for all the good you've done for us and that you continue to do. And we just look forward to all the blessings that are going to come to us through the Christmas season and then into the new year. We ask your blessing on all watching. May all Feel the warmth of your love at Christmas and continue to take that with them all through the year as we give you thanks and your blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, since we're going through our message series at Mass, It's a Wonderful Life, and we're talking about gratitude, I thought I would just share a little bit about things that I have to be grateful for. You know, one would be that I'm 59 years old and I still have my mom, my dad, and they're both doing well, so that's a tremendous blessing, something to be grateful for. Same thing, my brother is doing well, my sister, and uh, the in-laws, my nieces and nephews, so uh, that's a tremendous blessing too. Also something to be grateful for. My two best little friends, Max, my Cavalier King Charles dog, and my Gemma, my little uh, black cat. She's taken from the rescue shelter and I saw a video that the one group of cats that are hardest to adopt out are the black cats. There's a lot of, I guess, superstition. So in the tradition of my former cat, Vianney, I, I got a Gemma, and so she's uh, quite a handful, but also thankful of all the people I'm able to work with here at our church and actually many other churches. We have friends uh, far and wide who are doing a lot together, helping us to look how we can move ahead as a parish and really build God's kingdom. I'm grateful for uh, all the things that I've had in my life, especially the gift of the priesthood. So more than 30 years now, I've been able to serve as a priest, and I'm still able to continue on. So those are great blessings and things to be grateful for. Grateful for all of you watching. So it's been a real blessing, and especially for some of those we've had a little extra contact with, maybe through uh, a phone call or an email or a card. So thank you for all of those. Uh, ways we've been able to uh, keep in contact. I thought I'd share one or two events that I was very grateful for. Uh, sort of those things that kind of happened that weren't totally expected. One was when I was ordained probably about three years, we decided to take a trip, a group of people to Medjugorje. And if you know what that is, that's in Yugoslavia. The word Medjugorje means be between the mountains. And so there's St. James Church, Obert Air Catholic Church, and in the 1980s, in that part of the world, uh, the Blessed Mother started appearing to six children over in that parish of St. James. And so, little by little, it became a pilgrimage site for people around the world who wanted to go there and to pray, especially if they have devotion to the Mother of God. And so we got our group and we went. And if you've ever been there, there's, they certainly have their mountains. They say it's between the mountains. They're not kidding. So one is the Mountain of the Cross, or they call it the Hill of the Cross. It's a pretty good walk to get to the mountain, and then it's a really good walk to get up to the top. So that's the Mountain of the Cross. There's a big cross. It can be seen for many, many miles on top, and that was a pilgrimage site uh, long before the apparitions began. So people were already making their way to the mountain and walking up, and as you go up, there are stations of the cross, and they're very large, about you know five feet, tall and probably about four wide. And as you go up, you actually come by a little ice cream stand. So it tells you it's, it's a good walk. You know, people are stopping for a break. Um, but we did, every day would go up on the mountain. We would pray, had mass up there, did several things like that. Of course, we continue to take part in the devotions and the mass in the big church of St. James. And every day we'd also go up the hill of the apparitions. 
which is not an easy thing either because it has very uh, craggy rocks all over the hill. It's not a smooth walk. There's hardly any kind of a path. So you really got to be careful making your way up. But we would go up there and pray the rosary as so many other people did. And we did that for several days. And so it was kind of taxing. And I remember it, they, it was a special evening where they invited all the priests to come to a little chapel where they were going to be present for the apparition. So it was going to be Maria and Yvonne who were going to be the two visionaries who would be there. And we were all in the chapel. It was completely filled with priests. And we were all waiting for it to start. And one of the priests from the Franciscan group that are there in Medjugorje came and announced that there was a change of plans. The apparition, the apparition would take part in the church the, of St. James. So everybody got up and they were all heading over that way. Well, I was so worn out, I didn't really feel like taking a, another walk. And so I said, well, I just moved to the front of the chapel. I'll stay here alone. I'll just pray. And about 10 minutes later, everybody comes filing back in, along with Maria and Yvonne. And for whatever reason, they changed their minds again. They came back to the chapel and they had, I was present for the apparition. You could see the two children kneel down. You could see them talking, but you couldn't hear anything. Couldn't have for myself, couldn't uh, sense anything of the Blessed Mother, but you could certainly sense that something very special was going on. And that little decision of mine to just stay there in the chapel made it possible for me to be just two or three feet away from the event. So I've always been kind of grateful for that. It was one of those interesting things I never kind of thought I would be a uh, part of. Another one would be in Rome when we were studying and some of the students from our college, North American College, had an apostolate. That means they're doing some kind of ministry uh, with in the city. And it was with the Missionaries of Charity, Mother uh, Teresa's group, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And so the sisters at the homeless shelter invited, said to our seminarians, uh, anybody who wants to meet Mother Teresa, just have them come to the 5 a.m. Mass that was coming up that week. <clears throat> And so once I heard that, I got up nice and early and made sure I was going to be there uh, for the Mass. So we went to their chapel. It was kind of an interesting setup. In, in many ways, it looks like an ordinary chapel, but there's no pews, no kind of seat or any kind. They sit right on the floor. And so we really weren't sure where to go, but we thought, let's get out of the way. So we went all the way to the back wall and we sat down. And the sisters all filed in and they were all kneeling in, in front of us. And here comes... Mother Teresa with one of her assistants and they came right over to us and the assistant said, oh, you're going to have to move your in mother's seat. <laughs> so we had to get up and make way for her. I guess the system is the higher up you are, the further back you sit. So after the mass, though, we got to see her outside and to talk a little bit. She gave me a little miraculous medal and she said, you're a seminarian. And I said, yes. She said, well, then you be a good priest or don't be one at all. So she is a good spiritual director, even if you only meet her for a few moments. So those are some little highlights, some things that, you know, just a little beginning of the things I would really have to be grateful for. But going through this message series, it's helped me to be more aware that I should be looking and thinking about all those things that we really do have to be grateful for because God is a giver of all gifts and he never stops giving. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.